Well, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ again, and we're just so grateful that you're back. We're doing another session of Discipleship Empowerment Word on the word blessed. And I know we've been here for a couple days, and we probably are going to be here again. But these sessions are so important because I think when we're in the midst of trials and struggles, we need to bless the Lord, oh my soul, amen. And so that's why we're going to continue on our journey looking at this word blessed. And we're going to move, finish up a little bit of the Psalms, and then we're going to move into the rest of the Old Testament. And tomorrow, Lord willing, we will start in the New Testament looking at this word bless and blessed. And I encourage you to take time to think about these, this word, how great of a nugget it is, because, you know, God wants to bless you. God wants to com encourage you and strengthen you and build you up in the midst of trials. That's the amazing testimony that we can give to our world. In the midst of trials, we can be a blessing to the Lord. Amen? In the midst of trials, no matter how deep it is, no matter what kind of struggle we're going through, and you say, well, that's easy for you to say, because you've never had to do it. Well, that's not really true. I've had to go through a lot of trials and valleys and things that have struggled right from when I was a teenager all the way through. And it's not been an easy journey. There's been many mountaintops and many valleys. But I can say in the middle of all those things, God has always poured out His blessing and showed me His blessing. And I just thank God that He cares for us and wants to bless us. And if we were to title today's uh, look at this word, bless, I would probably say, give it a title to be Channels of Blessing. I know we talked about that yesterday, and I think it just continues on through the prophets and that, that we need to be channels of blessing for our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we begin, we're going to start off with Psalm 134, verse 1. And I think it's, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, where it, where it talks about lifting up your hands. You know, it says in Psalm 134, verse 1, 2, and 3, he says, uh, Bless the Lord, O my, all you servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary, O, and bless the Lord, the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Bless you from Zion. So lift up your hands, even in the middle of the night, the middle of the day, whatever it may be, you know, Sometimes you, you see these sports people, they lift up their hand and they point up like this and say, well, we want to give praise to God. Well, I think we as disciples should be doing that more often, that every time something wonderful happens to us, and it may be small or it may be large, maybe we should just lift up our hands and say, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing me, Lord, and now I want to bless you. And that's something that I think we need to all do. And I've been thinking a lot about that this morning. And even with that in mind, sometimes it adjusts your thinking, it adjusts your attitude, and it adjusts the way you do things. And we need to realize, again, God has blessed us, and He wants us to be channels of blessing to others. And by doing that, the first thing to do is to recognize the Lord and lift up our hands and say, I bless you, O Lord, because of what you have done in my life and what you're going to continue to do in my life, and what you're going to do through my life to others. Amen. And so, then as we go over in Psalm 144, another wonderful verse. Wonderful verse. I love this one. It says, Bless the Lord, my rock. And it talks about the word rock in the capital letters. It says, bless the Lord, O my rock. I'm standing on the rock of Jesus, we find in the New Testament. And we can bless the Lord because we're on the rock of Jesus Christ. I mean, what else can we say? You know, what do you think you're going to do when you get to heaven? Are you going to complain and murmur and say, oh, I wish I would have had this or I wish I'd had that? No, you're going to be so excited. You're going to want to bless and give praise to God because you're now entering into the marriage supper of the Lamb. But you know that same blessing can take place before you get to heaven. Why? Because we're standing on the rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He said, blessed, bless the Lord. 
Who is my rock? Amen. And that's what we need to realize. He is our rock and we need to bless the Lord. Then as we continue on, Proverbs gives us a some teaching on concerning this too. This whole idea of blessed and be to be blessed. He says over in Proverbs uh, chapter 3 verse 33. He says, the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. But he blesses the home of the just. So those of us who walk and want to walk in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You know, as we walk, just our daily walk of giving praise to the Lord. He blesses our home because we're trying to walk the life of justice in our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because our rock makes us just. And because he's our rock, we can be just. And because of being having him as our rock and being just, he is being just, he's going to bless us. Because that's what a just God does. When he gives his judgment, he's going to bless us because we have had him as our rock and we've walked justly before the Lord. Amen? Well, he goes on, and, and, the, and the Proverbs wisdom that is given to us, he goes on and talks a little bit more about this. And again, this is another unique verse that I just love. It's, it's both, it's found in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32. It says, Now therefore, listen to me, my children. Listen to me, my children. Now he's talking about children, not as little children, little children, uh, like grandkids and things like that. He's talking to us as his children. He says, Listen, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. So he's saying, children, you know, people of Israel, you Gentiles, those people who are, uh, are calling upon me as the rock, as Jesus Christ, you will be blessed if you keep his ways. But he doesn't stop there. He says, then again in verse 38, 3, he says, hear the instructions and be wise and do not disdain it. Verse 34, blessed is the man who listens to me. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. So he's saying, blessed is a man who, who just waits upon the Lord. And as he waits, he, he not only waits and sees the ways of the Lord, but also is waiting so he can listen to the ways of the Lord. He says why he says here, blessed is the man who listens to me. Previous word, verse, blessed are those who keep my ways. So you want the blessings of God, you've got to keep his way. And as we go through here, you know, the blessings come by being obedient. You know, it's not always something that's just freely given away and then we don't have to do anything. No. Blessings is in a, in a result of us walking in obedience with the Lord, being in faith with the Lord, standing upon the rock of Jesus. And as we stand on the Lord and we walk in the ways of the Lord, he keeps us and he wants to bless us. And the way the blessing comes is by listening. You know, the problem is so often we don't listen very well. You know, the Bible says that we sometimes have, you know, scales in our eyes and wax in our ears. Sometimes we don't see what the Lord is trying to say and we don't hear how the Lord wants to bless. Or sometimes when he says something to us, we hear it differently than the way he said it. But let me tell you, God wants to show you his ways. And he wants you to keep to them. And he also wants to bless you as you listen to him. And I think that's kind of neat. He wants, it's kind of a, a two-sided coin where he wants to, us to hear. But he also wants us to walk according to his ways. Amen. Then in 22.9, he gives us another little insight. And, and this is kind of interesting because it changes something from being what God just blesses. And, he, and remember, he's, he's talking about keeping his ways. And he's also talking about listening to him. But you know what he does now? He talks about the eyes, our eyes. He says here, it says, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives to his, his bread to the poor. You know, see, again, being channels. That's why I think it's so important to tithe. That's why I think it's so important to give uh, a gifts under the Lord. Because he wants to see us, to trust in him and be a channel. 
And isn't it interesting? He says, I, I, you know, he wants us, the, the wisdom book says, to have generous eyes. Well, that means to be looking around, to be looking and seeing where can you be a blessing? As God blesses you, you should be praying, oh Lord, open up my eyes and help me to see where I can be a blessing to others. You know, it shouldn't have to be where God walks up to us and hits us over the head with a baseball bat and say, see this, do it. No, we should be walking in the Lord in such a way, experiencing his way, listening to him, and that our eyes to be open so we can see where we can be generous for the Lord. And I think that's so important. Sometimes we think, well, what are we going to get back? You know, it's not so often what you get back. We're, we've learned that it's what we sow is important. And that it's God who gives the increase. And when the increase in the harvest comes, he comes and says, okay, laborers, rise up, go out and bring in the blessing of the harvest. And that's what we need to see. That there's a tremendous blessing around us, you know, I, 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 since I've come back from Thailand, you know, I love Thailand and I love the Thai people and I love Myanmar and I love the Kachin people and I, my family there. I am so grateful. But sometimes, you know, you, you, you got to go away from something for a while. And then when you come back, you realize how blessed you are, how blessed to have your own bed, <laughs> how blessed to have your own refrigerator, your own washroom. How blessed that you can walk around on your own piece of property. How blessed you can just to have a vehicle. How blessed is to be able to talk to someone in English again. <laughs> you see, well, you know, you should understand all that. But sometimes you forget and, and you don't realize that God has blessed us and wants to continue to bless us. But we need to see. We need to open up our eyes and we need to have generous eyes. Isn't that interesting? I've not thought about that too often, about this whole idea of generous eyes. But that's what he's saying. Have generous eyes. Well, then as we go over in Isaiah, are you liking this yet this morning? Isn't it interesting, this word bless? You know, in Isaiah 30, verse 18, he says to us, Therefore the Lord will wait, and he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted, that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait on him. Did you hear this verse? He says, just by waiting on him, by having our heart open to him, what is he going to do? He's going to pour out graciousness. And then what is he going to do when as we exalt him? and lift him up by waiting upon him and blessing him. He's going to show us more mercy. And then as we continue to wait upon him, he's going to show us our, his justice. Think of these words as they're piling up. Mercy and justice and grace. For what purpose? So he can bless us again. Blessed are those who wait upon the Lord. Because I think when you're waiting upon the Lord, you know, you begin to see his grace. As you wait upon the Lord, you see more of his mercy. Yeah, more of his mercy. And as you wait upon the Lord, you say, Our God is a just God. In all things, he has justly done what he has called to do. Even though we may not see it at time, it will make sense when we get into the kingdom of heaven. We'll sometimes think, oh, I want to ask the Lord, why did you do that? Why did you go that way? And you know what? You're going to see that what he did that he blessed you in the midst of those trials and in the midst of those challenges. And no matter what you thought about it, he was just in carrying out what his will was for us and for those around us. Why? Because he's a God who wants to bless. Amen? Well, let's keep going. We, we want to go over into Isaiah chapter 51 verse 2. He says, and he, here he reminds of the testimony. Isaiah wants to remind the people of Israel because they have forgot the blessings of God. And that's why I said sometimes when you go to another country or another place or you don't realize sometimes how great a blessing of the Lord is around you. You know, what he has given to you, what he has provided. And see, they had forgotten. And so Isaiah is going to remind them, <coughs> excuse me, in, in 51 two, and he says, Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For I call him alone, I called him alone, 
and blessed him and increased him. He said, I want you to remind you something. Abraham didn't have much of anything. Matter of fact, he said, when I called him, Isaiah is saying, he called Abraham, he called him from another country and brought him to another country with almost nothing. Nothing. And then he began to build Abraham from Abram to Abraham. But he still didn't have much of anything because his wife, Sarah, couldn't have a child. And so what Isaiah is trying to say, do you realize what has happened with Abraham? Do you realize what has happened to Sarah? And do you realize because of those two, you are a great nation, Israel. And you're blessed by what God has done through those two. And so we need to count our blessings and name them one by one. Yeah, it may not be, you know, but I, I you know, when, when I celebrate Father's Day, it may not be the way I, sh I would like to have had it when I was younger, but I'm blessed that I had a father. I'm blessed that I had a mother. I'm blessed that I have a family. I'm blessed that I have what I have because God wants to remember that all of that is come from the hand and the blessing of God. Amen. That's why he's trying to remind them. Remember Abraham. Remember Sarah. Remember where you once were. You know, I think of the stories where I was on the streets. I think of the difficult times that Colin had to walk through over in Myanmar. And now we can sit back, not really sit back, but give testimony and say, Lord, bless you for your faithfulness. Amen, Colin? Bless you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Bless you, Lord, how you've taken care of us. Bless you, Lord, for all that you have done. Then again in Isaiah 56, verses 1 and 2, he goes on and he talks about this. In Isaiah 56, he says here, as he talks about the salvation of the Gentiles, he says, Keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come. And my righteousness is to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hands from doing an evil. So he's talking about a prophecy. He says, those, you know, thus says the Lord, keeping the justice, keeping his righteousness, because he's about to reveal his righteousness. Yes, you have been blessed, Isaiah said, but there's a time coming where he's going to reveal his full righteousness. And who was that? Jesus Christ. That's what it's talking about here. He says, Israel, you're being blessed now, and it's because of the mercies and the grace of God you're being blessed. But let me tell you that through you, through the seed of Abraham, through Sarah, through all that those genealogies that have gone on and on and on, it, one is coming, and his name is righteousness. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to bless you. He's going to bless you by what he will do on the cross. Dying on the cross, he'll bless you because of he was resurrected from the dead. He's going to bless you because he entered, he ascended up into heaven and now is seating at the right hand of the Father, interceding on behalf of us. He's going to bless you because he sent forth the Holy Spirit to empower us and to strengthen us so that we can be able to be a blessing and a servant to others. Are you seeing it yet? Well, he goes on and he keeps talking about this to the prophets. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 2, he says, And you shall swear the Lord lives. You shall make an oath. This idea of swearing is not the same idea as what we think, you know, where you take the Lord's name and use it in vain. No, here, it's like an oath. You will swear. You will make an oath to the Lord. It says that the Lord lives in truth and in judgment and in righteousness. So the Lord lives. This is what we got to get. The Lord lives. Okay, yes, we agree. The Lord lives. Okay. And he lives in truth. He lives in righteousness. And he lives in making judgment for his people. And the nations shall be blessed themselves in him. And in him they shall glory. You know, if you give your life to Christ as a people... First of all, as an individual, then as a people, and as a nation. He's talking about Israel. If you bless and worship God for His truth, for His judgments are right, for His righteousness, 
he will pour out a blessing on the nations. And that's why some of the nations aren't receiving the blessings of the Lord now, because they've turned their back against the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God. If we want the blessings of God, we need to confess our sins and turn our hearts back to him. And when we do, our nation, as we as a people, our nation and those around us are going to be receiving a blessing from the Lord. Jeremiah 17, 7, he goes on here and says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and who hopes in the Lord. So again, here's two things that he says to it, that you want to be blessed, trust in the Lord. So presently you want to be blessed, trust in the Lord. And in the future you want to be blessed, hope in the Lord. Trust and hope in the Lord. That's what he wants us to do. Trust and have hope in the Lord. That's where the blessing comes. You know, don't get your eyes on your bank account. Don't get your eyes on your possessions. Don't get your eyes on their sickness or 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 the negativity that goes around around you or all the bad things that seem to keep coming your way and in the way of your family. What we need to do is have our eyes open and see that our God is a God of that we can trust and that we can build our hope on. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, we're going to go over it even in Daniel. Daniel talks about how we need to bless the Lord. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 28, he talks about the three Hebrew boys. And because, it, you know, sometimes these, these Daniel and the three Hebrew boys had quite an effect on the kingdom uh, that they were living in. They were, they were hauled off as uh, to another nation you know they were taken out into bondage but because of their faith in the lord and because of what they did even in the midst of trial you know uh, nebuchadnezzar say you know there's something really different about you three you three guys because even though i'm trying to kill you and trying to destroy you the blessing of god is on you and that's what we need to get you know, when people look at us and they say, you know, I don't know how you keep standing. The world keeps pouring out its troubles on you, keeps giving you a hard time. But in the midst of it, your God reigns. Listen to what he says. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angels and delivered his servants who trusted in him. You know, their God, they trusted in him. And you know what? Nebuchadnezzar says, bless the Lord. I see now that if we trust in you, God looks after. If we trust in God, he looks after and wants to bless. But he goes on. Who trust in him and they have frustrated the king's word. Isn't that interesting? Here's the leadership of that time in Babylon. And because they trusted in the Lord and God continued to bless them, that even what the king said could not have authority over these three guys because they trusted in the Lord. And he says, you, you frustrated the king's word and you yielded your bodies that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own God. That's what they did. And because of that, it spoke powerfully into Nebuchadnezzar and probably all the other leadership of that day saying, look at these three guys. Look at how they trust God. Look at how God blesses them and keeps them. And even in the midst of trying to persecute them and putting them in a fiery trial, even the fire, but even these three guys said, even if we were to die, we're still blessed. He wanted the king to know. He said, even if you put us in here in the fiery furnace and, and we get consumed of it and we die, we're still blessed. But if we don't get consumed and we live, we're still blessed. Whether the negative or the positive, we're still blessed. <laughs> Amen. And that's the attitude that we got to have. Well, Daniel 12, 12 says, Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Now, it's a prophecy about the end times. But I want to just show that how blessed we can be if we just wait upon the Lord. You know, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run. They shall mount up as wings of eagle. I mean, it's just so wonderful. How are they able to do that? Because of the blessings of the Lord. Because of the blessings of the Lord. Haggai 2.19 talks about 
that as they come back, that there is going to be a promise, even though they were wandering away. You know, people keep wandering away and wandering away. Let me tell you one thing about God. That is, anytime you're willing to come back like the prodigal son, he'll bless you. Remember the prodigal son? He took his, his, his possession, his, his heritage. He went out and used it foolishly. And he realized he came back to his senses. He got his mind. Some of us need to come back to our senses and get our mind back off the things of this world and back on the things of God. And he got his mind off the things of the world and his friends. And he said, if I would just go back to my father's house. And he goes back. He says, Father, I know I don't deserve a blessing from you. I know that I shouldn't even. Can, you, can I just come back and just be one of your hired servants? And the father says, no way. Not a chance. You're my son. And he blessed him. Matter of fact, he blessed him so much his older brother was not happy. We'll get on that on another day. Haggai 2.19 talks about this whole idea. He says, Is this the seed still in the barn? As it yet the vine, the fig tree, the promagant, and the olive tree have not yielded its fruit? But from this day I will bless you. Even though there's been famine, even though there's been trial, why? Because he was trying to get a hold of the people's tension to turn back. Don't look at the possessions. Don't look at all the fields and all that you have. Look at God. Because he is a God who wants to bless. Well, in Malachi tonight, today is our last verse. Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 and 12. Now, here is a challenge. And I, well, I don't think it's a challenge. But a lot of times we don't have the blessings of the God. And, and, and again, I'm glad I, I glad I get the chance to talk on that tomorrow. But you know why we don't have the blessings of God? Malachi is going to show us. Because we don't tithe and give unto God what is due to him. Did you hear that? I just kind of snuck that in there. But you know, God wants us to be channels of blessings. And how are we going to be a channel of blessing if we don't give back unto the Lord? God not just wants us to give back praises to him. He wants to give of what we have been given by him. So give it back to the storehouse. Give it back to his church. Give it back for the ministries that God has called you to raise up to bless. For he says here, because you look in verse 8, and you'll see it's talking about the tithe. He said, do not rob me, God is saying. And in verse 10, he goes on and says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, and try me now, is this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour out to you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Look at that. Bring unto my house. Challenge me, he said. Challenge me. Give. Have generous eyes and give. And let me show you that you can't outgive the blessings of the Lord. I will bless you. Matter of fact, I'm going to bless you so much that your storehouse won't even be able to hold it all. That's what God wants to do. As we give, he gives to us. As we bless him, he blesses us. Matter of fact, he blesses us first so that we can bless him, so that we can become channels of his blessing. He says in verse 12, And what is the result of this? All nations will call you blessed, Lord, for you will be delightful in the land, says the Lord of hosts. God wants to bless us, and God wants to continue. Well, I want to go back as we close, and I want to go back to that blessing again, that benediction blessing. I want to pray it again. Just as we close today over in Numbers chapter uh, 6. Can you let me play, pray it again on you? In Numbers chapter 6 verses 24, 25, and 26. Where he says, and let's pray now as we give it unto the Lord. This whole idea of this nugget of this wonderful word. Oh God, help us to be your channels today. And Lord, we just want to come under your fountain of blessing so that we can be channels of blessings to other. And so, Father, we pray this prayer, and I pray this priestly prayer for everyone who is listening today. I extend my hand to you, and I say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up, lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you peace. May the Lord bless you and give you that peace today. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We look forward, Lord willing, to being with you again tomorrow. But I encourage you today, open up your eyes and be generous to what the Lord is showing you and let Him pour forth through you as a channel of blessing to others this day, both in words and in deeds and in what we have to give to Him. Amen. We love you now. Keep on keeping on in Jesus. Good day now. Bye-bye.